Morning, welcome to the next podcast of Andy Collier Talks Cricket Memorabilia. I hope you noticed that I've had my hair cut. Uh, 10 out of 10 if you have, but anyway, it's not my ears getting lower, so it's, uh, it is a haircut. So anyway, it's been quite an interesting week this week with uh, bits and pieces coming through. Um, some signatures came through this week, which were quite nice. Um, what have we got here? We've got uh, Nathan Astle, who was a bit of a favourite of mine when he played. I like the way he played his cricket. Um, 81 test matches, uh, debut in 1996, so that's a nice addition to the uh, autograph album. Next one to come through was uh, Ian Thompson, Sussex man, uh, 1950s he played, played five test matches for England too. Uh, what a nice card there with the three lions, and also got a bubble on the top there as well, so quite a nice uh, addition to the album as well and then three South Africans came through this week and um, one well, I might not be able to pronounce his name but uh, what have we got up here Arthur Osh or Oshe he toured England in 1929 so quite a rare signature there from South Africa he played three test matches and we've got um, Lindsay Tuckett down here I've missed him off of a 1947 sheet so uh, quite nice to get him um, he played nine test matches, and also Vivian Ian Smith, um, he played nine test matches too. I've actually got a couple of signatures of him, but uh, uh, unfortunately I couldn't get in without getting the other two, so uh, I had to get all three in one go, but quite a reasonable price, just over 20 quid, so I'm quite pleased with those. Nice addition to the autograph book there. And the other thing that came through was this rather nice menu which is uh, the 50th anniversary of the first test match between South Africa and England. And uh, that's 1888-1899, Wharton's team. Um, this one is Wednesday, May the 3rd, 1939. Obviously just after when the uh, MCC come back from their 38-39 towards South Africa with the timeless test, which um, lasted 10 days. Um, Unfortunately, England just pulled in short, 42 runs behind, I think they were. And um, rain, in, rain intervened in the T interval and they decided to abandon the game so England could catch the train back to Cape Town to catch the Athol uh, Castle back to England. Otherwise, they'd have been uh, there for another week or so, perhaps. So quite a nice item there. Um, it's actually, I'll see it's actually it took place at the Lord's Hotel. So uh, quite nice. Toasts were His Majesty the King, Cricket and the MCC, the Committee and the MCC South African team. So it'd be nice to get the signatures on there, but I've already got those, so not overly important, I suppose. So that's quite nice additions to the collection this week. Now, going for a few boxes the other week, um, the Sydney Barnes plate turned up, which um, about six inches, quite light, not quite sure the makers were, but obviously a Staffordshire make. Uh, but on there it's got brilliant bowling uh, by Barnes, obtained six wickets for 24 runs. The English team in Australia in 1908. Now, 6 for 24, that actually was in a state game. It's got Barnes took six for 24 against New South Wales. This is the uh, catalogue. Oh, a bit he's done. Um, the match was played at Sydney Cricket Ground on the 22nd, 23rd and 25th of November 1907 during the 1907-1908 MCC Tour of Australia. So um, that's the only analysis he got, which was 6-4-24, which is a bit of an odd thing. He thought he might have done a test match or something, but um, there we are. Perhaps they were, just, they were uh, asked to make a set and... Uh, that was it, got a slight chip there, I just noticed, but uh, an old chip. So anyway, it's quite a nice old Barnes plate, six inch plate. Um, the other thing that um, I found this week is Centenary um, South African Cricket News, which is uh, nine, oh, 1989. And it's got all the information here of test matches between um, England and uh, South Africa. Up to 1889, or 1999, shall I say, 1989. So quite pleased with that. It's quite an informative little booklet, actually. And uh, I noticed in there the other day that, um, or yesterday, that Brian Bazzano was the sort of author. 
supplied all the facts for it. So quite nice. Might have one of those lunchtime. But um, anyway, so uh, quite a nice sort of informative paper there. The centenary edition. Behind me today is the Colin Bland presentation copy. I think this was his debut for Rhodesia, MCC Rhodesia, November 1956. And Colin Bland is just down here. Lovely photograph there of the MCC side that um, I'm pretty sure they beat them um, on that tour. This is Bulawayo. Um, so uh, quite a nice black and white photograph there. And quite pleased to have that from the Colin Bland collection. I had that quite a few years now, actually. Time does fly by. So that's um, Colin Bland's copy. So that stays up there again. Yep, okay. Right, and then behind me here this week is a couple of sandalware items. Um, salt and pepper shaker. This is the pepper shaker with WG Grace on. With his MCC cap. There. And then we've got Jack Hobbs there. Jumping out to drive. And then uh, going around a junk shop a few years ago. This is a Lancashire ashtray. Saying there were ashtray. But um, got two different. It's obviously a bit later than that one. Uh, two different marks on there. This one's Sandlin Ware, that one. This is Lancaster Sandlin Ware. Bit of a better one on that one. Two different marks there from two different eras of Sandlin Ware. So quite nice little um, items there from uh, the ceramic collection. So uh, anyway, that's about as much as I can do this week. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it and it's been uh, reasonably informative for you. And I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.